Okay, this is a quick video on showing how we can do integration with DNAC and ICE. I'm going to try and get this done in nine minutes, and so let's get right to it. So first of all, things we need to consider is this, you know, what we're going to integrate with. If you've got a single ICE cluster, which is doing both TACACs and RADIUS, then that's fantastic. Then we can just simply integrate DNAC with that one cluster, uh, TACACs being for our device authentication um, and then our command-based authentication. When, it, when an admin logs onto a box, they're authenticated to the box, and then each subsequent command they run, we can authentic you know, authorize that command to, to, be, uh, to be run or not. Uh, and then we have the, the radius box, uh, which is used for user-based authentication, uh, you know, dot one x map, and then we assign the, the VLAN and the SGT or any access control lists uh, based on how they authenticate. Brilliant. So, but what if we have a dual ICE design? We've got a separate TACS cluster and a separate radius cluster. You know, who are we going to integrate with? So, if we're doing SDA, um, you know, the, the best thing you can integrate with is going to be the radius cluster here. And, and the reason for this is that SDA relies on Cisco TrustSec, um, and the SGTs, which are part of Cisco TrustSec, are passed down when the user authenticates. Assurance. So, if we're doing assurance again, yes, if it's assurance, just assurance, no plug and play in those elements. Then again, you can do the integration with a radius cluster. Um, why? It's because for wired users, when they um, authenticate, um, the radius cluster can give back some more enriched data towards uh, to the assurance application in DNAC. Plug and play. So if we're doing pure plug and play, then TACAX is going to be the guy you want to integrate with. Um, and the reason for this is if you're doing um, plug and play and discovery and, and onboarding of lots of new devices, um, those devices, when discovered and, and onboarded by DNAC, will be pushed to the TACAX cluster. So it saves you a lot of uh, repetition of work there. But what if you're doing plug and play today and then you're planning on rolling SDA out tomorrow? Then sure, we can, we can use the TACAX cluster initially and then you can... Um, sever that integration and switch it over to the radius cluster and start running SDA. Now, things to note, what do we mean by integration, you know? So what we're saying here is that DNAC, when it's integrated, will provision ICE for you. So when we talked about plug and play, when we discover a device and we push down configuration, then DNAC will also go and log on to ICE and I'll add that device in as a managed device. So that's a um, pretty, pretty cool thing to happen. Um, note, if we do integrate with just one cluster, so if you are into doing SDA and you've got a, a split cluster design, TACX and RADIUS, uh, and you integrate with the RADIUS cluster for um, user-based authentication, it doesn't mean we can't still push down um, the TACX-based information. It just means we don't do the configuration of ICE from DNAC. So, so what I mean by this, if you were to um, build an SDA fabric, um, and you run LAN automation, um, and then if you're integrated with a TACAX cluster, it will push those devices as managed devices to ICE. This won't happen if we're integrated with just a radius cluster, um, but what will happen is, as part of the provisioning process, we can still push down the configuration to the device that says, hey, when a user logs on via SSH, or, or heaven forbid, TACAX, uh, not TACAX, Telnet, <laughs> excuse me, uh, you still have the configuration in to tell the device to authenticate to TACX based on an IP. So we still do the provisioning, we just don't push that configuration set to a non-integrated ICE cluster. Cool, hopefully that makes sense. Anyway, that's just a, a bit of a, a why why we're doing what we're doing and some best practices. So what we've got in today's toolkit, so we've got DNAC 1334, uh, we've got a virtual ICE build, and of course, your host, Sirius Sam. So let's jump straight onto this box and have a look what we're doing. Okay, so here we are on DNAC. We can quickly go and have a look in our system settings and see if we already have a integration or not. And if we scroll down, we can see that no ICE is currently configured. So we can click on configure and we can add it in. We do already have some non-ICE um, devices integrated, uh, not integrated, uh, added as a policy service. So before we do this, let's go and do some checks on ICE itself. Um, so the first thing we want to be aware of is that ICE must be running a um, a plus license. So if we can go into the licenses, we can quickly have a check here. Uh, we can see we have plus plus licenses running. So that is a requirement. Other things we need to be aware of is under the settings, we need to have the ERS, the external restful services enabled. This needs to be turned on. I believe it's disabled by default. So we need to flip that on. 
Then under the deployment, we're going to need on the pan, we'll find that guy, and we're going to need to make sure we turn on PX Grid. So PX Grid is the protocol that's used to communicate between ICE and DNAC. Other things to be uh, aware of here, if you're looking at doing SDA and doing policy outside, um, and you need to reapply policy somewhere else in the network, you might want to think about SXP uh, being enabled. And then we've got the device admin service, and that's for our TACX. Um, so that's the, the requirements we need for ICE. And then once you enable PX Grid, it will come up after some time, and we can click on this PX Grid Services tab up the top here, and eventually you'll see this is um, green and it's, it's connected. So if we go back to DNA Center over here, what we need to do is we need to click Add, and then we need to put the server IP address of ICE. I'm just going to jump back onto ICE because I can never remember IPs. Uh, this is why we have DNS. Um, and then on. So this shared secret, this is going to be the shared secret that's pushed down between the devices and um, ICE itself. So this is in the shared secret key for um, TACX and, and RADIUS. Now here, this is the username and password for ICE um, so that the DNAT can, can log on initially and make any configuration changes required. So the FQDN, the fully qualified domain name, it needs to be populated in here. We can get this from ICE if we go back to the system and deployment and click on the, the ICE node here. We can see here the FQDN is right here. So if we copy him and paste him in, unless you happen to know the, the name off the top of your head, kudos to you. Subscriber name is who we're going to be. So we're going to be our DNAT client. This is just um, how we're going to present ourselves to ICE itself. Um, and that is all the configuration elements we need. Do click down this advanced settings. So if we're integrating with a single cluster, which is both Radius and TACX, then do tick TACX as well. If we're doing just TACX, then just TACX. And if you're doing just Radius, well, I'm sure you guessed just Radius. And then if we hit apply, and then that will go off and that will establish a communication session with ICE. Um, after some time, it will appear in ICE under the PX Grid services as a um, client, which we then need to approve. So I'm just going to pause the video and wait for that to appear. OK, so I've hit refresh there, and we can see that this DNAT client has come in as pending. Um, before I hit approve on this guy, I'm just going to pop back to DNA Center, and we'll hit refresh here. You can see that the it was, got, was actually active, uh, in progress, but it's gone to active. Um, but this is the, the ICE cluster we're trying to integrate with. So we need to go here and we need to, let's just hit refresh again. Um, actually, it's, it's gone in. It might have gone in um, because I've had this integrated before. Um, typically, you'd need to click on it, as we're seeing for the NDP. So this is a network data platform portion. Um, we need to go in and, and approve that. And that basically says, yes, I'm willing to establish a session with this guy. Now, the reason we see two is this is the, the DNAC to ICE, uh, things like the TACAX and the RADIUS, um, and this is used for um, the NDP, which is the assurance. So there's, there's two sessions towards um, ICE for, for it to work fully. And that, that is pretty much it. Now, if we go back, now that's been approved, if we if we hit refresh, uh, if we go to our system 360, we should be able to see down here that it's active, active, um, and we're all up and running. So, so what does this mean for us? So uh, DNAC and ICE, um, they, once, once the trust is established, DNAC will actually push its inventory to ICE, it's propagated to ICE. Any time you update any of the device credentials in, in DNAC, um, DNAC will also update that with the changes. What doesn't happen though is ICE doesn't share its existing device information with DNA Center. So if I go into ICE and I look into the um, ah, sorry, well, yeah, network devices, sorry, I get lost sometimes. These, these won't be pushed to um, to DNAC. Uh, I mean, they, they will in, in my instance because they were already there from a, from a previous deployment. But, but from high level, yep, that's that's all we need to do for for the integration. Um, brilliant.